Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and I blog at remysharp.com and I also run my own small web consultancy at leftlogic.com. This episode will be revisiting the image fade transition effect. So a few episodes back, um, we covered a few different methods of transitioning from or doing a transition from one image to another. And a few readers have been writing in asking about dragoninteractive.com and their website and they have a transition which is really smooth and doesn't use the technique that we covered and in particular Greg Johnson had taken it a step further and started to create the jQuery plugin to do this so I'm just going to walk through how to approach this and how to actually create this effect. So to start off with let's have a look at Dragon Interactive website and this is the effect that we're we're aiming for. So you roll your mouse over and there's a really nice transition and you know it helps that they've got really sexy graphics. They use this effect across the website in a few places and it just it makes it look really smooth. And what I look for when I'm I want to understand how something has been uh, written or how, how it's working behind the scenes is the first thing I'll look at is turning off J uh, JavaScript to see how it degrades. So it's navigation, my mouse rolls, o rolls over, nothing happens. But to be fair, um, the effect only enhances the experience. It doesn't, by taking it away, it doesn't take anything away from the experience. Um, and what we could do, uh, we could have a hover, uh, CSS hover class, where the, uh, the, the, the blue uh, hovered state kind of shows up, or the orange one here. Um, but that's something I'll, I'll do in the demo that I create. The second thing I'll look for is the differences between what the, the sent markup and the actual rendered markup. So what I mean by that is if I do, uh, if I fire up Firebug and inspect this home element, I can see I've got an li, uh, an anchor and two spans. And also I'll notice when I put my mouse over the, um, the span, it's the opacity that class hover that's changing to make it make it show through. Now, if I do view source, um, page source, find home. So, this is the scent markup. So I've got the li, I've got the anchor, and I've only got one span. So this tells me that the JavaScript is actually inserting in the second span, which is fine. I'll also do this in in the version I create. So, I've taken their um, their background images. So they're using sprites. So this is one big image that they're using to create this effect, which is great because it means that as a user, I only have to download this one image, and uh, that covers all the different states. And I've started to write some of the markup to to create this. So if I just show you the markup. Very simple stuff, just a, a straight UL. I've got these list elements. I'll come to this cl highlight class in a minute. My anchor, which should really go somewhere real, but for the demo it will do. And then everything inside here, it can be a span, it can be, it needs to be inside of an element because in my CSS a little bit hi higher up, I've said everything inside of this A link, hide it. So you can put a paragraph, you can put an image, you can put whatever you want but it will be hidden uh, by default. Uh, so the point is when images in CSS or JavaScript is turned off, this text will appear. This is the CSS that goes with um, uh, the markup to, to, to create these, this navigation block. There's quite a bit here to, to get the background position incorrect. So I've said all the anchors have this background image and because each link is a slightly different size I have to give it its own width and its own background position which I've taken directly from Dragon Interactive's website but for your examples you might just use it for an on off button or you might use it for you know, a different style of navigation the height and width is going to be different and the background positions are going to be different <clears throat> so you can see there's quite a bit here and also, I haven't actually covered this. Uh, they've got an extra state here, which is selected. 
I'm only covering this uh, the, these two states. So this is my page without any JavaScript on, no JavaScript here at all, and what I've got is the effect working just as a hover state. And the way that I've done that is by including this highlight class. I've included it as a class because when my JavaScript runs, I want to get rid of it. I don't want to have this this hover state. I actually want it to kind of uh, blend in and, and you know replicate this fade in. So I need to ditch this hover state. So if I just show you what I mean, so let's include jQuery for starters. And now that I've removed this class, obviously the effect, you know, nothing's happening, but now I can fade up cleanly. And the, the code to actually to, to replicate this effect is really, really simple. I'm going to just chain it because uh, I want to. The first thing I need to do is add this, this hidden span. So I'm going to insert new spans at, at this point. Uh, which will be used, I'll give it a class of hover and if you look at my CSS I've prepared this uh, dot hover, I've given it a predefined height which matches all the other links same positioning, same background and you can see where I have my hover state I've got exactly the same effect being created for this span that has this hover class So I'm going to do dot append. Oh no, I'm not right. This select uh, the reason why I can do that is because uh, my selection was on the uh, the li. So I want to change it to navigation and a dot append because I'm appending it to the the anchor, obviously, and not the li. Class equals hover. I think I can actually just do this. Let's get rid of this one. I'm going to just render the page and check that this span has actually inserted. And yeah, it has. So if we look at our our markup here, because this is visible, um, they all look like they're in this hover state. So if I edit the element and put opacity 0.5 yeah you can see it kind of transitioning, you see exactly where I'm going so that's 1, that's not. and now I'm going to do dot h So I'm looping around each of these anchors, not these spans, because the context is still the anchors. I'm going to cache the span. And as I cache the span, I'm also going to set the, CS, the opacity to zero. So it's by default, it's hidden. So if I just refresh the page now, that totally didn't work. Awesome. Uh, so why didn't that work? Because I spelled opacity wrong. Right, cool. Back on track. So I've cached the spans, and I've cached them because I'm going to use them to, to fade the opacity up and fade the opacity down. And I'm just going to do this dot hover. So the hover function ta uh, hover function takes two two functions as parameters. This is the on hover state, and this is off hover. And dollar this is the active link that we've hovered over. So you know, this one or this one and so on. And I'm going to do span dot fade to that's the amount of time it's going to take to fade one so it becomes you know, completely visible span dot fade 
half a second, naught. Now that's, that code's not quite complete, but I'll show you why it's not, not quite complete. Mouse over. JavaScript error. Okay, JavaScript error. Why have we got a JavaScript error? Because fade isn't a function, it's fade2. There you go. Right, the problem with this is that if I go back and forth all the time, you see they keep going? We definitely don't want that effect. That is going to annoy the hell out of our users. You see what I mean? It's like some kind of crazy disco. We don't want that. That's probably also spiking our CPU. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add dot stop to each of these. Refresh. And that's it. That's the whole technique in only a few lines of code. I can compress that further if I want to. I can change this to uh, chain it so it says find a and then append so you know that's the the, the chaining is a bit long at this point we probably wouldn't want to really do it but what I'm doing is in the DOM I'm finding all the uh, list elements removing the highlight class and then going from within this list element and finding all the anchors and then appending this However, I can change it to a plugin by changing. I mean, uh, it's questionable as to whether or not you'd have this as a, a normal bit of state. But let's say, let's say that we would. I can pull this lot out and this is how we we wrap our plugins. So we we start it with bracket function. Uh, what this is doing is passing in jQuery as a, a parameter to this anonymous function, which is captured as dollar, which means that um, it doesn't interfere with prototype or, or move tools or anyone else who uses uh, the dollar function. And then we can do dollar dot fn dot I don't know fade equals That's probably not quite right. Uh, we can try it actually. So now I'm just coding, letting you guys watch. Ah, yes, yeah, see that works. Um, so this is the 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 API for the plugin. So it's as simple as you know dollar dot fn dot then you know my my plugin name, and I'm returning this dot. Um, You'd see a lot of um, like dot h. You might see uh, was it like return this dot h. That's the kind of thing you'd see in a plugin a lot. But because we're doing a few more things to it, I can do this dot remove class find and so on. But our plugin needs to actually attach on the the allies because of this this remove a class business. Um, but to keep things simple, let's not have as a plugin. I'm not being very decisive today, but I've started this uh, this this screencast like eight times and been interrupted by the phone, always ringing. So apologies if I'm ranting now. But there you go. That is the the hover effect revisited, and that's broken. Oh, I've gone and broken the code. No, I haven't. There we go. Okay, thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me on this one. Um, I'm planning to do another one, another kind of mini episode, uh, very shortly. Hopefully, the wait won't be as long next time. Um, but any comments, any feedback, any alternative methods to this effect, 
drop a comment on the uh, the jQuery for Designers website. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the screencast. Thanks for watching. Hi, just one other thing while I remember. Um, I've given this a test in IE6 and 7. IE7 it works fine. Now I checked out uh, Jack Dragon Interactive's website in IE6 as well and the hover effect is really, it feels clunky. It might be because I'm running in parallels um, uh, or it might be something like that. It might be because I'm running in the IE tester application. But when I ran this effect, uh, th this new effect that I've written in IE6, the, the transition was really jumpy. So what I actually did instead was if uh, dollar browser dot msie and dollar browser dot version is less than seven, just jump straight out and don't bother attaching any effect. So this just gets rid of it altogether. It leaves our it leaves the highlight class on, and it leaves the um, it leaves the hover state intact, and it means that IE6 doesn't get too clunky, um, but it does work fine in IE7. All right. Cheers.